Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a drum sample library in Reaper. And I created a project over here where I recorded all the drum samples from my hardware drum machine. There's a bunch of kicks, snares, claps, hi hats. Crashes, hits, shots, voices, some effects, and percussion. And I recorded them one after another, like this. And my snares, my claps, and so on. So now I want to use these sounds in Reaper using the Reaper sampler right over here. Resample Matic 5000. So I could trigger it from a MIDI keyboard and use Reaper as a drum machine. So I want to create a drum library with folders for my kicks, for my snares, and so on. And luckily, that's very easy to do. But let me show you how. So the first thing I'm going to do is select this first item here, the kicks. Then we need to cut these up so we have one item per sample. And we could do that with dynamic split. Just hit D. That opens up this dialog where we could split the items using their dynamics. In other words, each hit will be its own item. So let's turn off at transients and choose when gate opens and when gate closes. And make sure we turn on down here, remove silent areas when the gate's closed. This way it's going to create different items for each hit. Then we'll adjust the threshold. Let's bring it all the way down. And then adjust this slider to make sure we avoid multiple hits. Let's zoom in. See this area right here? There's a multiple hit. If we bring this down a bit, this readjusts the difference between the gate opening and closing. And it'll avoid multiple hits. So that's a lot cleaner. So it's going to cut all these little pieces. So we get one item per drum hit or sample. Now we should also adjust the trailing pad, which will make the files a bit longer. So we don't cut off the decay. Let's add about 100 milliseconds. And then we can split it. And we can see that each one is completely separate. Listen back to them. Make sure they sound good. And then we could export them as separate audio files. So go to the file menu right here and go down to batch file item converter. Choose that. That opens up this dialog where we could export each one of these items into their own file. We'll go to add and we'll choose add selected media items. And because they're still selected, it's going to add them right here. But notice the name. They're not very useful, but don't worry about that. We'll change that in a bit. Then we're going to decide where we put the files on a hard drive. Let's choose Browse, and we'll go to a hard drive where I created a folder called Drum Library. Let's make subfolders for each drum sound. We're starting with Kicks, so we'll name a folder called Kicks. And that's where the files are going to be exported to. And we can see the path right over here. So I'm going to give it a name. We'll name it kick, space, and we'll go to the wildcards over here, which is going to add a variable after each one. I'm going to choose timeline order. And that'll add a different number after each one of our sounds. Then we can choose a sample rate. If we want to keep it the same, I'm using 44.1. Just leave it set to source. But if you want to change it, to maybe 48, 96, you could do that here. But I'm going to leave it based on the source. And we can do a similar thing with the channels. Leave it based on the source. These are all stereo. Or we could force it to be mono, stereo, or anything else. But I'm going to leave it on source. And because we're not changing the sample rate, we don't have to worry about this. Resample mode. 
We're not going to add any effects or dither. We can choose the format as WAV files, AF files, maybe MP3, but I'm going to use WAV. And I'm going to keep them at 24 bit right here. We don't need to include any markers or regions. And then we can just choose to convert them. And when it's done, we can check this in our directory. On Mac, that's the Finder, or PC, it's the Explorer. Here's our folder, and here's the kicks, each numbered 1 through 36. Let's go back to Reaper, go to our plugin. We want to put the sample in here. Now we could go to Browse right here and open the kicks, but there's a better way of previewing our drum sounds. So instead, let's open up in the view menu, the Media Explorer. And that looks like this. Here's our drum library folder. And instead of just opening it, I'm going to right click it and choose the option here, Add to Shortcut List. And then it's going to show up over here each time, making our library easier to find. So we can just click it, it opens up the folders. Go to Kicks, and then we can quickly just preview the sounds just by clicking them. That's a pretty good one. Now, instead of double clicking this and adding it to Reaper, we can just drag and drop it to this plugin. Just drag it, drop it right here. And if I play my MIDI keyboard, I hear that kick. Now it's set up to play with any key. We could change this to just play with one key. I'm going to type 36, which is a C2. It's now just going to play when I hit C2. And there's my kick. Let's copy this and paste it. This could be the snare. Let's change this to 38. And it's going to play on D2. But first, you have to separate the snare sounds. So let's go do that. Go over here, select our snare, hit D for dynamic split. We could usually leave the same settings. Let's zoom in. Looks pretty good. Split it. Go to File, Batch File, Item Converter. Let's clear this and add it. Add selected media items. We'll change the directory. Make a new folder for our snares. And that path is chosen. Let's change this to snare. Again, it's going to use the wildcard timeline order. We'll keep everything else the same and convert it. Then we can close this, open up the plugin. Here's where we're going to put the snare. Go to View, Media Explorer. We can choose the drum library that we saved over here. Open our snares, and they're right here. That's a good one. And we'll just drag this in right to the plugin. Now, if I play D2, I have a snare. Just like that, I created a drum machine. Let's do one more for the claps. Copy it, paste it. We'll change this to 40 for E2. And again, we'll select just the claps, hit D, split them all, batch file, item converter. Let's browse, create a new folder for the claps, change the name to clap, clear this, just add the selected, and then convert it. All 12 of them are processed. Go to the plugin, Media Explorer, Drum Library, and open the claps.
That's pretty good. Just drag it in. Now if I play E2 on the keyboard, I get a clap. So now I've chosen three sounds from a drum machine. But now I could switch it even easier from the plugin. If I go to my kick, we can go right here, and the entire folder of kicks is right here. Every time we switch it, we hear the different sound. Maybe I like that one better. Go to my snares, same thing. Switch it to that, my claps. So by importing them in this way, we could switch our sounds a lot quicker. And the best part about this is you only have to do this once. Every song we work on, we could just create a new plugin, go to the Media Explorer, and choose our drum sounds right from here. We'll have the kicks, the snares, or any folders we create. And just drag them in right from here. And the sound switches right in the plugin. So that's pretty much it. That's creating a drum sample library in Reaper. I hope you learned something, I hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Mm -hmm.